Hey guys, what's going on? I'm so happy to announce that I've just released a new Udemy course titled, wait for it, Fundamentals of Backend Communications, Design Patterns, and Protocols. I am so excited for this course. You know, you, you're going to see my excitement if you decided to take the course. You're going to see my excitement in all my videos. <laughs> I'm always excited when I, when I build something new. It's just, backend engineering is such a vast field and i'm learning new things every day so summarizing choosing what to pick for this course has been really difficult for me so because there's so much to pick from right so what i decided to do is i from my you know 17 to 18 year of experience i started in 2004 ish you know that era i've been building a lot of software i've been built a lot of back-end application and i've seen patterns emerge as the in the software i built and in the software i read about and things like nginx and like a database software like Pas postgres or ram cloud or uh, envoy and the design choices that these big software companies do uh, really i always find a pattern emerge and that's why what i did is i, I started collecting these design patterns and i created this effectively as as a back-end communication design pattern i found, I found these pattern always emerge in this so i started to summarize them here so what always fascinated me in all these years is trying to understand everything that i use and eliminate any black box that i might be interacting with and the more i learn the more i find that there is so much work still that can happen that is still need to be done in the entire stack going from the network card down up to the operating system boy there is so much work to be done even at the linux state on the windows at their state there is so much work because now, now that you understand how the sausage is made, as they say, now you can say, oh my God, there's so much to improve, right? Because you always, here's the thing. I always assume that everything is perfect. I, at least this isn't just me. Everything that I use is like, oh, this is the perfect library. Of course, there's no mistakes. There's no bugs. But of course, I deeply know that I, there are a few bugs. But once you know, really know how things work, you might say, oh my God, why are we doing it this way? Why are we not doing it this way? Then, of course, you will understand that doing it this way is also not a good idea. And then you move your context from just building a simple backend application to actually considering anything underneath you. And boy, this changes everything. And that's the goal of this course, basically. The course is just to kind of pull the curtain and say, hey, this is what we are dealing with. Understanding every single protocol everything that is happening what exactly happened the moment you send an http request up until the moment it is received in the kernel receive buffer and then the backend application reads that copying it to the to its process and processing it encrypting it decrypting it all the work that you do you you think that you're only listening and getting a request but boy there's so much happening and your backend is the moment you start using libraries, these libraries are doing work. They are contributing to this consumption of CPU usage. And this is where architecture and scaling and, and uh, sizing really comes into the picture. I absolutely enjoyed making this course. And I hope you kind of give it a shot. If you want to check out this course, hit to backend.hussainnasr.com. This link will redirect immediately to Udemy with the latest coupon applied. Or hit to Udemy and use code BACKEND10 for a discount coupon all right let's quickly go through the course outline to talk about what are we exactly going to go through in this course so the first section we're going to talk about is the backend communication design patterns one of my favorite sections here where i try to summarize how clients actually connect to the backend there are believe it or not there are only a handful of ways a client can communicate with a backend right there is we go through the request response beautiful simple model talk about the publish subscribe model we're going to talk about of course asynchronous versus synchronous processing and communication because this word is going to be these two words are going to be mentioned 
all the time, right? So you have to understand what is asynchronous, what is synchronous. We're going to talk about stateful versus stateless communication pattern, right? How can you build, hey, I want to build a protocol that is a stateful protocol versus a stateless protocol. What's the difference? What's, what's, what's good? What's bad? Why would I prefer one over the other? We're going to talk about other design patterns that Kafka and RabbitMQ uses and other uh, backend applications uses, such as uh, the poll model, P-O-L-L, push model, the long poll model, server sent events. All of these are really ways to achieve single goal, but each has advantages and disadvantages. Understanding these patterns and thinking, it's like, okay, what is my backend? I found that in my, in my years of experience, always all the time these my backend fits into one or or couple of these design patterns of course there might be something that i've never seen before a design pattern that i've never seen before and i would love to see it because i'd like to learn more and learn the new techniques effectively right so that's that's basically this section. We're also going to talk about, in this section, we're going to talk about this sidecar pattern, how service meshes and microservices created this unique design pattern that I actually absolutely enjoy. It's still, it's a simple proxy model, but it's it's very interesting. So I thought it a dedicated lecture and I dedicated as a design pattern uh, because it's really, it's really interesting that how is the sidecar pattern actually fits in. Demultiplexing, multiplexing, believe it or not, this is a pure networking low level concept, but it shows up all the time in the back end. It shows up in HTTP 1.1, it shows up in multi path TCP, it shows up in HTTP 2 when you multiplex thing, quick multiplex all the time, and the browser demultiplexes when it uses HTTP 1.1 from the client request to multiple connections, right, in the in the, in the the browser. So it's, it shows up everywhere. So demultiplexing and multiplexing also shows up here. So we're going to talk about all that stuff in this section. The next section after that is actually concrete protocols. Now we go into the weeds where it says, okay, let's pick up. Okay, what is a protocol really? Talk about what is a protocol, the protocol properties. Talk about all this, the, what makes a protocol a protocol. You know, again, we try to not focus much on definitions per se, but I just understand what is out there right now, right? So once we understand what a protocol is, the definition of protocol, the rules and properties of a protocol, there are so many, right? Then we go to concretely in the protocol, we go into the beautiful UDP, right? Before we even dive into any protocols, we gotta explain the OSI model because without the OSI model, you cannot move forward. OSI model is one of the most important things for a back engine because we're going to reference things like, oh, this is a layer four uh, proxy versus this is a layer three switch and versus this is a layer seven gRPC reverse proxy. What does all that mean? Understanding the OSI model, which is the standard today, actually makes things relatable and uh, uh, things more clear in this case. So then we're going to jump into the actual concrete protocols. We're going to go into the weeds and talk about how UDP diagrams actually look like and go into the TCP and how the handshake is established. What is the flow control, congestion control? What is the properties of reliable communication? Then we're going to pick up a lot of other protocols. Again, I picked up what I think is the common. Of course, there are so many other protocols. I can't possibly cover all of them maybe in the future i'll cover more but i'll get i'll cover http 1.1 in detail I'll cover http 2 i'll cover http 3 i'll talk about uh 3 and of course quick so i'll talk about grpc and i'll talk about webrtc and uh, other protocols as well then the next section is uh, i specifically add that because http and specifically https is a very abundant protocol and it's, it's what the web runs on i thought i'll create a dedicated section to talk about just to, just taking https and see how are how many configuration you can be in your backend when it comes to https we're going to talk about https over tcp with tls 1.2 how does it differ between tls 1.3 why is why we pick one over the other HTTPS over quick and then talk about HTTP over quick with zero round trip and then talk about how does zero round zero rtt works with ts 1.3 i'm gonna talk about all of these kind of configuration in the HTTPS. I, I i absolutely like this section i think you're gonna like it too and then the next section is the back-end execution patterns i think this is my favorite section so far 
It's just going now that after we talked about all the protocols, we received the data that represent my request, what really actually happened in the under the hood in my backend application? How is it actually accepting connections? How does it actually taking the data, the raw bytes from the kernel? to the process to the MMM process we're going to explain what a process is what a thread is how do they differ the shared memory model you know i'm gonna of course as i explained this i'm gonna give real life examples how nginx does thing how memcache does things how uh, ram cloud does things every different backend architecture is different and that's how it makes it you know how, how this is how every software is different and all these design choices really affect the the back end execution and i absolutely absolutely like like this stuff and this in this particular section you're gonna know how much the kernel is offloading work for us the kernel is doing so much work and because we know what the kernel is doing hopefully after the end of this section you're gonna be go oh my god it's like wow the kernel is doing a lot of work what if this happened? What if this happened? All the problems that you think that you had, most of them might not be your fault. Might be just the way the kernel was designed. So if someone, if the client couldn't connect to your backend, although your backend is running, this could be some of the things that might happen in the kernel, right? And now that you understand how things are work, you can work around it you can fix it you can solve it right and my hope is after this section some of you might actually look into contributing to the linux kernel because guess what you're gonna find out that the, after this although this might sound uh makes sense you're gonna find out that the linux kernel or the os is not perfect there are a lot of certain limitation that is not being solved today and most of us, back in engineers, the OS guys, the OS, of course, the OS kernel, they know about this limitation. But to me, learning about this recently is just, man, now I, I actually, it's like the kernel has been, the, the, the curtain has been revealed and I, I'm now seeing things. And now when you know the limitation, you can, you can make better decisions. And this is what matters, I think. So we're going to talk about all that. We're going to give tons of example about different how backend architectures. How, why why do I choose to spin up a single listener versus multiple listener? Why do I have multiple threads versus single process? Why do I have multiple processes versus a single process? How all this matters and how does it affect the execution time? How does it affect latency? How does it affect performance? This is really, truly my favorite section, as you might probably know this. And finally, it's not a back-end course if I don't talk about proxies and load balancers. So we're going to dedicate an entire section just talking about proxies, layer 4 proxying, layer 7 proxying. What is a proxy? What is a reverse proxy? You know, I talk about this all the time, but of course, proxying and reverse proxies is the core of true backend engineering. You got to understand what a reverse proxy is, what a proxy is. But once you understand how protocols work, now you understand the job that a proxy the, the really heavy job that the proxy and the reverse proxy is doing for it, the API gateway, the content delivery networks, all this stuff is doing a lot of work, load balancing techniques, actually understanding the back end and the front end of a proxy, because the proxy is actually talking to both sides. Having the proxy understanding two languages, right? Token gRPC from this side versus token gRPC from this side. It all really adds up and understanding this is a very critical concept and that basically ends the ends the course that will be the last section again guys thank you so much for checking out this course really really appreciate you i hope you enjoy it thank you so much see you in the next one goodbye